Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to convert an image from color to black and white and do it the right way. We're also going to visit a concept uh, called masks. And this will be a, a light introduction to what a mask does. And we'll do all this using a non-destructive method. Now, the first thing I want to do is show you this image. Now, you don't have to open this image. This image is just here to show you what I'm talking about. If I were to take away the color of this image, just replace the green with its grayscale equivalent, or replace the red with its grayscale equivalent, you'd see that something silly happens. Check this out. Image, adjustment, desaturate. This is the dumb way to turn something into black and white. What did we end up with? We ended up losing a whole lot of information. Not only did we lose our color, but we lo lost the fact that this stripe is supposed to seem different than this one. And so what we need to do is teach you how to take these um, images and when we have a color image and we want to convert it to black and white, we want to make sure that we can tweak the colors to where the grayscale equivalent isn't just picked directly, but instead we focus our decision on how to do that. So. What I'm going to do is open up an image. I'm going to go to my bridge here, my mini bridge, and the yellow folder I've already downloaded into my resources folder. I'm going to double click that and open it up. So here is the yellow flower. And the better way to, to convert this to black and white would be to use an adjustment layer. The adjustment layer is down here at the bottom of the layers panel. And I'm going to choose black and white. And what it's going to do is it's going to come up with a quick set of values for these different colors. And it's basically saying that it's going to be lighter or darker on each of those colors. So a uh, increase of this yellow dial here will say, hey, yellows, you're going to become a brighter gray. If I turn it down, it'll be a darker gray. Watch how this works. The petals here were yellow. So I'm going to take my yellow and turn it up. And you see how that's brightening up or darkening. Now you can choose auto and it's going to do its best to determine uh, a relationship between these colors that result in giving you as much clarity as possible. And this is usually the easiest thing to do. But uh, you can always adjust those things by yourself. Like if you want to make the um, middle of the flower come out a little more. It was kind of a yellowy orange. I'm going to bring up my yellow a little bit and bring up my red a little bit. And that's going to make a difference there. You see, definitely making a difference in that little area. All right. So you can tweak these how you want. You can also tint your colors as well. Like if I wanted to give it a sepia tone, make it look kind of like an old school photograph, quickly does it right there by giving it a tint. And you can adjust the color to whatever you want. Um, let's do that. Let's make it be cool. So you see, makes a very cool color. I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to turn off the tint. Now, the second thing I wanted to show you was that while this is a quick way to do black and white, we can also selectively make parts black and white. And that comes into play with the idea of a mask. Right now, this little area here, this little rectangle on my adjustment layer is called the layer mask thumbnail. Now, what a mask does is it tells you what part of the image is going to be revealed and which part is going to be hidden, and there's levels in between. In our case, this mask is completely white, and it represents the entire image. That means that the entire rectangle here is going to be black and white, because that's what my adjustment layer is. It's saying the adjustment layer needs to affect the entire layer. Now, I can make it not affect the entire layer by simply painting black into this layer mask. Now, make sure you are correctly on the mask before you start this, because you can be clicked onto the adjustment or the mask. You see how the rectangle pops up. Now that I'm on the mask, I'm going to go to my brush, and I'm going to switch to black and white, and make sure I'm on black in the foreground. Now, if I were to draw in here, 
it reveals the color, basically pokes a hole through this layer to where it doesn't affect that middle part where I drew. And if I were to, let's try this, draw a smiley face, and I'll just increase my thumbnails here. I'm going to make them large. You see I made a thumbnail, a uh, layer mask thumbnail that has a little smiley face. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to selectively choose what is going to be colored. And in my case, I think I'm just going to have the petals be colored. Now, I've already messed this up a lot. And rather than like reverting or going back in time, I want you to understand that you can also just paint white to make the black and white adjustment layer come back. So I'm going to just paint white. I'm going to switch to white. And you see how it just erases, if you will, or reveals that black and white adjustment layer right back where I was working. And I told you I just wanted to do the petals, so that's what I'm going to get onto. I'm going to switch back to my black, and I'm going to start painting out here. So you see, I can work right to the edge. I can do zooming in, zooming out, and make just the petal show through. Right? You can also change the amount that you're doing, okay? If you have a um, really fuzzy brush here, this is a 0% hardness, and if my brush's transfer settings are set to pen pressure, it's going to be very subtle as I paint around. So you see how it's, I can slowly bring it back into color. So this is how you can colorize a particular portion of your work. Now what I want you to do for this assignment is to colorize some regions and make it look really good. I want you to be as precise as possible. I want you to zoom in on areas. I want you to take your brush and get it to a different size if you need to, but I want it to look right up at the edge. Okay. If you accidentally go too far, oops, I colorized some of the background, no big deal. Return to white, switch to white, and just erase that. Alternatively, you could begin in a different manner. Let me show you this. I'm just going to zoom out here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this mask. I'm going to right click on the layer mask thumbnail and I'm going to say delete layer mask. And now I don't have a mask. Well, to add a mask to any layer, you can't do it to a background layer, but any normal layer uh, or adjustment, it, you just have to click this icon down at the bottom. It'll add a mask right in there. It's back. Now, I want to add a mask that's not white. So I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to control alt Z. And this time I'm going to hold down the button on my keyboard called alt. So I'm going to hold down alt and tap. And see, this time it gave me a black mask. And essentially, what did it do? It turned off this layer. See, I didn't, I, the eye's still on. I didn't turn it off. It simply said, hey, don't do anything. So you could also go this route. You could keep everything in color and just make the flower black and white. And to do that, you would paint white. So you'd switch to your brush and you'd paint white on the black mask to make the flower black and white. Now I want you to do a really good job on this. So either go where you create the flower colored or do the opposite where you create the uh, background colored and make the black and white on the flower. All right. Once again, if you ever screw up, you can just switch back to black and it will rehide that part. So have fun with this. And once you're done, make sure you save it into your chapter one folder with the proper name.